Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really cute set of note cards as well as a coordinating box that you can tuck them all into and give them away as a gift. Now today's video is part of the DIY Christmas Gift Ideas Giveaway Hop. And I know that's a mouthful, but you guys, this is a super cool hop. Every video in the hop is going to be giving away the item that they make in their video. All you have to do to enter to win is to leave a comment on the different videos and also in your comments let us know if you're in the US or international. Uh, some of the items will only be shipped within the US. My um, giveaway is this set of note cards that I made here and it's open internationally. Um, so as long as I can legally ship to you from the US, you're welcome to enter to join. Now. The set that I'm going to show you how to make is quick and easy. I actually made a set similar to this before. It was really popular. People asked me a lot of questions about it, so I thought I'd make a video for it and then also the box that coordinates. You can make probably three or four sets of these in almost the exact same amount of time that it takes to make one set because there's no coloring. All you're going to be doing is stamping and then masking a little bit here. So it's, it's roughly the same amount of time when you have your supplies out. I'll just show you what you need to make one set and then obviously double or triple if you're making more. Uh, you'll need one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock for the box. I've got five note cards and five envelopes that match and then a little piece of black cardstock for my sentiments. All of my images are from the rabbit hole designs. I'm going to use the pretty and peonies and sassy sentiments. Obviously you can switch these out for whatever you want, but florals work well. I'm also going to use these uh, fishtail banners from Lawn Fawn to cut out the sentiments, but you can skip that and just trim them with your scissors if you want. So the first thing that we're going to do is stamp up our note cards and the envelopes. And notice that I have masks cut out for my stamps. That is going to be helpful because even though there's no coloring, I am going to do a little bit of masking so that the leaves look like they're behind the flowers. Um, so I just need one mask for each and you can reuse those over and over again. I store my masks with my stamp set and use them until they die. <laughs> um, I hate fussy cutting so, uh, so I try to hold on to those masks and use them over and over. Now all we need to do is line up the images that we want in the foreground. In this case it's the flowers. Uh, stamp those out and then just switch them. Using the Misty is really helpful for this because you can go through this really quickly. I'm using um, some Distress Oxide ink which stays wet a little bit longer so I don't want to stack up my cards and envelopes on top of each other directly because I might smear the ink. So just keep that in mind. You can use dye-based ink. The dye-based ink is more likely to come through your mask. If that happens just wait a minute and let your mask dry a little bit in between. So I went ahead and I stamped the flowers on all of my note cards. I also am going to come in and I want a little hint on my envelope. Um, notice that I cleaned off the stamps before I pulled them off the Misty and moved them around. You don't want to get ink on your fingers or move dirty stamps around on your cardstock because you'll get smudges and smears. Uh, nobody wants that. <laughs> um, so go ahead and stamp out all of your uh, flowers then switch over to uh, the leaves. And we'll mask off all of the flowers where we need to just so that we can put our leaves in the background behind them. And like I was saying, it, it takes almost no time to actually stamp them. You end up spending more time cleaning the stamps and moving them around than you do actually stamping. So you can make multiple sets very quickly with this. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process for all five of my note cards and all five of my envelopes. Remember with envelopes, you just want to hint at what's inside. So I'm not going to put a whole scene at the bottom. I'm just going to put one flower and one leaf for my envelopes. And I love the way these flowers are very elegant and classy. And then the Pairing them with the sassy sentiments is fun because it's it's sort of snarky and unexpected. <laughs> um, I did use some sentiments that are uh, also kind of less snarky. I've got a you got this and miss you, that kind of thing in there. Um, so we'll just go ahead and move these around. 
And I did want to mention, you don't have to stick with pinks, and you don't have to stick with flowers. You can switch these out for dogs, you can switch these out with blues, greens, whatever colors you want. If you're using a medium to a dark cardstock, you can even just use Versamark ink and change up your colors without having to uh, worry about getting the right color ink. So once you've got the cards and envelopes done, we need to stamp out our sentiments. I've got a piece of black cardstock. This is actually poster board from the Dollar Tree, and I know that that sounds weird, but it is great for stamping white embossed sentiments on. It's coated, and that allows the ink to sit right on top, and you get a very smooth one, like just stamp it one time, you get a really smooth sentiment. So it's it's like my favorite cardstock for stamping white embossed sentiments on. So I'm just going to line them up in my Misty, leaving enough room for those dies. And again, you don't have to use these dies, especially if you're going to do a lot of cards. You might want to skip the die cutting. You can just cut them with your scissors or cut them down with your trimmer. I know a lot of people don't even like the fishtails, so they skip that altogether. I do, and I like the perfectly squared lines because I seem to always get kind of askew if I uh, if I don't use the dies. So that's what I'm using here. And I went ahead and used my anti-static powder tool first, then stamped with Versamark ink and put the white embossing powder on and melted it with my heat gun. Now I can line up the dies. And obviously my dies are longer than the sentiments, so I'm going to have to run them through my Big Shot twice, which is no problem. I'll show you how I do that here just to make sure that they... Uh, actually uh, fit. You want the uh, the fishtail on either end to fit. So after I run it through the first time, I'll just take out uh, my little sentiments here, and then you just take them and flip them around and line up the fishtail on the other side. And I always flip it over to the back side as well to make sure that I'm not, um, I'm not askew there. You don't want to get crooked and have it partially cut into what you've already cut, if that makes sense. You just want to cut the end. So I'll just line them up, run them back through again. I'm not going to make you watch me do all of them, because it's just the same thing over and over again. But you can see that gives me perfectly fit sentiments in there. And I did that for all five of them. So to add a little more interest to the card bases, I wanted to come back in and add some sprinkles of color. So I'm just going to smoosh on some more of that worn lipstick ink, and then I'll uh, wet it with a paintbrush just enough to get it moist enough that I can actually sprinkle it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add that to my card. And I also want to come in with some of this shiny white. It's kind of a, a pearlized white in my Gonzai Tombi set. And then also a little bit of black. So I've got pink, black, and white little spots that I'm, I'm fly-specking onto my cards. It just kind of fills in the scene a little bit and finishes it off. And then I'm not going to do any other coloring. I think this is just a great way to... Um, to fill that space and give you almost a, a little scene without a lot of work. And I just go ahead and do that for all of the cards and it's quick and easy. So now when you're doing that, if you get any big splotches that you don't like, don't worry about it because we can just cover it up with our embellishments. And to finish these cards, it's, it's quick and easy. We are almost done with the cards already. All I'm going to do is take our sentiments and I pop them up with a little bit of foam tape and I'm just going to put them into the lower right corner of the card. And a pair of tweezers and your tea ruler will be helpful if you want to make sure that you've got them lined up and everything's parallel. And I just do the same thing for all five cards. And you can stop here if you want, but I like these flat back gems. Uh, you can also use sequins. I do like a mixture of sizes, and I just grabbed the black ones because they, they go well with this, but you can, again, change up the color scheme to suit your needs. And for me, 
it takes the longest amount of time to figure out where I want my sequins or gems to go. <laughs> I don't know why. It, it's supposed to be random, so it should just be quick and easy, right? Um, once I figure out the placement on one, though, I can do the same thing for all of the cards because they're all the same. So spend a couple minutes, get up the way you like them on the first one, and then the other ones will come together really fast. Um, I'm using a jewel picker and my tacky glue pen. That jewel picker, I had just cleaned it off, so it's extra tacky. Um, I've got to figure out how to actually clean it. I cleaned it with rubbing alcohol, and I think that kind of dissolved some of the tip and made it really sticky. So if you know, let me know what I'm supposed to clean that with. <laughs> um, but it, it goes back to normal tackiness very quickly. And then I just did the same thing for all of my um, cards here to finish them off. And then we're done. We've got our cards done. I'm not adding any extra embellishment to the envelopes other than that flower in the, the leaf. Um, so we just need to build our box. Now I've got a link here to the Crafty Owl's Box Buster. This is a calculator for an envelope punch board, but it'll give you the dimensions and measurements to make a box rather than an envelope. So you can plug in your numbers um, in either inches or millimeters. I'm using in inches here. And you're going to want to take the measurements for your largest elements. So my envelope is bigger than my card. So I'm using the measurements of my envelope to give me the length and the width. And I'm adding a quarter of an inch to the length as well as the width. And then you also need to figure out the dimension, how thick your stack of cards is. So you put all three of those numbers in there, and there's a handy diagram that'll walk you through it. And then it'll tell you what um, size to cut your square to, your paper size, and then where to make your first and second punch. And you see I've got a warning here. That's because um, I'm using such a, a large piece that the edge is going to go beyond the score line on my envelope punch board. Um, the new punch boards have a swing arm that'll come out, and that's not a problem. If you're using an old one like this, just grab your score pal, or if your trimmer has a blade that uh, is a scoring blade, you can use that as well. So the first thing that we need to do is cut the paper down to a square. And in my instance here, it's got to be nine and a half inches square. So I'll go ahead and trim the paper down to that. And then we can bring in that punch board and measure for our first punch. And I've got, um, got it right there handy on my phone. And I'm just going to line it up and use the ruler at the top of the punch board, grab a bone folder, and then I'm going to score that line, that diagonal that was on the board. And you can see my paper is hanging off beyond the board. So I need to extend that line using my score pal. So I'm going to get as much as I can with that board and then I'm going to turn it and put it into my score pal and I just need to line it up here and I actually found that it's much easier to line it up if you mark your score pal. I marked the center line there and there's little uh, lines down at the bottom so I can see I can follow that line all the way through and then just use my ruler to help line up the paper as well. So now that I've got the first punch done and the line extended all the way, I can put it back in the envelope punch board and punch out the second one. And you can see that my line here doesn't extend beyond the board, which is great. So I can just uh, follow the whole line there. Um, I did miss a little bit at the top, so I'll reinforce it on my score pal there. And then you rotate the paper and line it up with those lines that you've already scored and then punch and score again. And you just keep doing it all the way around. Um, two sides are gonna actually extend beyond the board here. And so I'll just use the score pal for those. Easy peasy. If you've ever made an envelope before using your your envelope punch board, it's the same thing, except you're actually gonna use, or you're actually gonna make two score lines instead of one on each end. And that second score line is, is your depth there. It's gonna give you the dimension for the box. So I'll go through and finish this up. And unfortunately you do have to do 
one whole side at a time. You can't just um, do all of your punches and then partial scoring and then come back and do it all on the score pal at the same time because you won't be able to see the line um, to line it up for the next side. So you do have to kind of move it back and forth between the two. Um, and again, if you have a trimmer, you can line it up quick and easy in your trimmer if you have the right size board, or I'm sorry, the right blade that doesn't cut all the way through, it just scores. So once I've got all of my lines scored, I'll flip the paper over and then I can just crease all of those lines at the fold. And then I'm gonna grab my scissors and I will cut a little tiny, like a little V um, out of each of those notches there. Cut those tabs off completely like you would on an envelope. If you cut them off, your box won't be as structurally sound. Leaving them there will, will give you just a little more support. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm cutting the first two so that they go down and then the, the other two that come in from the side. It's not really critical. It just does seem to work better this way. And you will only see the points for the top and bottom flaps. So I'm going to round those with my punch board. There's the opposite end of the uh, punch is a corner rounder. And I don't need to worry about the two side pieces because you'll never see them. And now we've got a box. So the only thing really left to do is to decorate it. And I decorated it the same way that I did my cards. I'm gonna go ahead and mask it off because I only want the decoration on the back. I'm using this um, masking tape here. I'm running low on purple tape, so I grabbed my masking tape. Um, you don't see me doing it, but off camera I am sticking it to my pants first just to kind of ease up on some of the tackiness so it doesn't tear my paper when I remove it. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing as before, stamp some flowers, making sure that I kind of space them out a little bit so that I can just use the one set of masks. If you have two of the same flowers right next to each other, then you'd have to kind of move them around more. And then I'm just stamping uh, the leaves to fill it in. And I wanna kind of go up, down, up, down, not exactly straight across. And then I did the same thing where I came back in and splattered on some more of the same three colors and then it's all decorated. So now we need a clasp so that it'll close up before we assemble it. Uh, so I grabbed some of the scraps, the black scraps that I used for my sentiments and a half inch circle punch. I went ahead and I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and cut two of those. And then I also need two of the pink scraps. These are gonna be on the inside. So if you don't have any more of the same color cardstock, uh, for those scraps, don't worry about it. You can use white or black or anything. You, you won't really see them too much. You're gonna need an eighth inch hole punch and also a pokey tool. Um, what we need to do first is go ahead and kind of fold it up so that we can figure out where we want those circles to be. So once it's folded up, I'll grab a pencil and then I'll just kind of mark where I want the center of each of those two circles to be for the clasp. And then for this uh, top flap, I can reach that mark with my punch, but I can't with the bottom one. So that's where I need my pokey tool. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can use a craft knife. It's going to be covered up. You just want it big enough for a brad to be able to slip through. And then we're going to punch a hole through the center of those black circles. And I do find it easier to mark that with a pencil first, because once you put it into the punch, it's kind of hard to eyeball where the center is anymore. Um, so a pencil mark helps me. Then I grab two little black mini brads and we'll use those to attach those circles. Um, when I went ahead and cut these out, I used the same paper that I used for the sentiments and it has a white core which looked a little frayed and, and not too pretty. Um, around the edges. So I went ahead and grabbed a Sharpie and just darkened up the edges so that you can't see it. Little details like that really help make everything look pretty in the end. So I've gone ahead and attached it to the bottom flap there. When I opened up that brad, I opened it up loosely because remember we are gonna have a string that's gonna go between the black and the pink. So you need a little bit of a gap there. And then I covered it up with one of those pink circles, just glue it down. That will keep the brad from 
like grabbing your cards, your cards won't get stuck on it and it won't accidentally pop any of your gems off or anything like that. Um, and then we're just going to do the same thing for the top flap. Now this time we want to add a little bit of string for our closure. So I've got some just twine here, natural twine. I'm going to push that through the hole that we punched with my pokey tool. And then I can go ahead and stick my brad through right next to it there. Then flip it over, open it up again, kind of loose. And wrap the twine around a couple times, cut off the extra. And then I'm just going to use a dot of glue to kind of hold that in place for a second. And then I'm also going to cover this up with the second pink circle. That just makes it pretty because this one you will kind of see from the inside. So you want to hide your, your knot and your brad in there underneath that. And then we can just kind of test out the closure. Make sure that we left a, enough gap with the brads. So I'll wrap it around a couple times, trim it up. And now we can glue it together. So all we need to do to, to glue this together is just similar to an envelope. Um, we do have those extra little flaps on the side there, so I'm going to add glue to those first. They're uh, a little more tricky to get to. So I went ahead and um, put them in place. I do like wet glue for this rather than double stick tape because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. And you want to kind of fold up your card as you go to make sure that everything's square. So I did that and just kind of hold them for a second so they, they dry. And then I'm going to pinch the uh, bottom flap there about where those two inside flaps meet. And that just where I stuck my fingers kind of gives me a guide. Don't stick glue up above where my finger is there. And I just added a, a line of glue on each side there. And then I can close it up. And again, I'm folding it up and trying to square it up. And I'm pushing down with my hand in there. Um, it's, it's kind of tricky for this because you don't have a lot of room. I only have a three quarter inch gap in there. Um, so if you grab a block or a book, you can put that inside and push up against it as well. But that's it. We're done. All we need to do now is stick our cards inside and we've got a gift that's ready to go. And did you see what I mean about how, how fast it goes as far as the stamping? There's no coloring. So other than the die cutting, if you've got this set up, you can do a whole bunch of these really quick. And you could skip the die cutting and just do, um, just trim those sentiments with your scissors or a trimmer. And that'll save you a bunch of time. And you can have a bunch of these gifts wrapped up, ready to go quickly. Another thing that I often do is I save up some cards that I make throughout the year and I'll bundle them together. So there'll be a set of five or six completely different cards, but I'll make a box like this in Christmas colors and then give that away as a gift. And it's a set of not matching cards, but greeting cards that the recipient can use. And my friends and family love them. I, in fact, sometimes I buy them real gifts instead and then I hear complaints. Why didn't I get my cards? I want my cards. <laughs> so um, you can easily adapt the box to whatever size you need. So if you're making square cards or have a set of a bunch of different size cards, you can just kind of stack them up and measure and adjust the box accordingly. It's a great idea. Now, I hope that you have been inspired to give this a try. Don't forget to comment and let us know um, if you're in the U.S. or if you're international. And hop along with us because there's a lot of great gifts, a lot of cool inspiration, and winners are going to get a lot of fun prizes. If you like today's video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like that, you can click subscribe and ring that bell. And after you hop along, Go ahead and come back here and check out these videos for more inspiration. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.